How's it going everybody? Oliver here for iInfluence and today I'm going to be answering one of the most commonly asked questions that I get as an optician and that is why are glasses so expensive? Now it's something that's really hard to answer straight up I'm going to be quite honest but I do have an answer for you and not only that I'm going to be answering this question too. How much should you consider spending on your next set of glasses? If these are two questions that you've been asking yourself, keep on watching this video. I have all the answers you need. So before I get into answering the question, I do just want to take a moment and encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. On this channel, we're going to provide lots of information and resources that are going to help you take care of the health of your eyes and the quality of your vision. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get to answering the question. Why are glasses so expensive? Now, I want to start by saying that I think expensive is the wrong word to place there because expensive really is relative. It's subjective, depends on the individual. The truth is what's expensive for one person isn't considered expensive for another. The way that I look at it is that expensive is typically defined or labeled in this way. Uh, not because a product or service reaches a predetermined number or reaches or passes a threshold that a consumer has placed on a product or service. I think that it usually comes up when we look at a product or service and we say, oh, I can't really justify it. I don't agree with the number that they've assigned to this product or service. And so we start to question, we start to reason and we start to say, it's expensive. It's more than I think it's worth. And so that's where the word expensive typically comes up, right? Now there are two things that we can do. We can either say, hmm, you know what, that's expensive. Or I don't agree with the price that this product or service has. And I can't justify it. It's not worth it. I'm not going to get it. And so you make that decision and you find another product or service that you do agree with. Now the second decision that we can make is as consumers, we'll look at a product or service and we'll say, okay, this, this price for this product, I don't agree with it, but I feel like it's still superior to what else is out there. And so I could justify it in that way. What I am getting out of it, because let's say you've done your research, you've made those comparisons and you've said, I could tell the difference. And so though I still don't agree with the price, I can justify it. And so it typically leaves a category of being too expensive and just becomes worth it and we justify it. It's subjective and it's relative because what's good and perfect for one person is not going to be for the other. Okay. So that's why I just want to leave it at that, those two decisions. And we're going to move forward with this conversation with those two things when we're talking about glasses. So let's phrase the question this way. Why do glasses cost what they cost? Why do those $40 glasses online cost $40? And why do those $500 glasses in store cost $500? Well, typically it's not for nothing. It's not like these companies are going to lead you to believe that they're the exact same product. They're just as good. And I think that most consumers can tell the difference when they're able to do a comparison. And so those $40 glasses, and I don't mean to insult the company that sells those glasses or the consumers that buy them. Like I said, everyone has different needs and are in different situations, visual needs. What you're able to afford is different for everyone. And so those $40 glasses are typically less expensive because they don't have as much unique properties to them. This is typically the way that it works. Somebody comes out with something that's innovative, that's cool, that's new. And there comes along these other companies and they'll mimic it and they'll copy it for much less expensive. It happens in the clothing industry. It happens in the tech industry. It happens in the eyewear industry. So it's not to insult these $40 glasses. It's simply saying that rarely do they innovate. Rarely do they come out with something first. They typically will have to copy something that these other more expensive manufacturers release first and then they end up copying it at a lower price point. And some people are okay with that. Some consumers are okay with getting something that's just a copycat or I don't want to use a harsh word like a ripoff, uh, but something that is really just unoriginal. 
and some people are okay with that. The cost of producing the, the glasses is generally less because they find popular styles and then they just mass produce it, like mass produce it like crazy. Especially online retailers is completely different. You have to have a lot of this inventory on hand. And so you buy things in bulk. And so when you have these sellers that are willing to sell you things at a discounted price because you're buying in by the thousands, as opposed to an independent optical shop that really either sells from inventory where they might have two or three of a certain frame on hand as opposed to thousands, that's typically another reason why things cost a different price point. Now let's get to the lenses. So these less expensive options is not to say that you're not gonna be able to see out of them, but generally the quality of the materials being used is gonna be lower than those that are gonna cost you significantly more. Let's take, for example, the coatings. A coating that you're gonna get on a frame and lens package that costs you $40, it really isn't gonna compare properly to a coating that alone, alone a coating could cost, let's say, $100 to $150 by a company, let's say by Zeiss or by Crizal. These lens manufacturers or coating manufacturers, they put a lot of resources, millions of dollars into developing coatings that are gonna last many years, that are gonna have the scratch resistance that's gonna be equal to glass in some cases, versus these coatings that you're gonna get on these $40 frame and lens packages, where they're gonna call it anti-glare coating, but you have to clean them all the time, they scratch easily, they're not gonna last you two, three years, and then they only have, let's say, like a 90-day scratch warranty or manufacturer's defects warranty. So these are some things that some consumers could tell the difference on and some people can't. And if I was to say, oh, you know what, on those less expensive or those lower cost coatings, you're probably gonna find that you have to clean them more often, that they scratch easier, or that the color on the lens is more noticeable compared to that Crizal, compared to that Zeiss, compared to that Hoya Shamir coating that you're gonna get on the more expensive lenses. And so those kinds of things, when you put them next to each other, are gonna be more noticeable to the consumer. That's why I actually do have a lot of people that will oftentimes will get an inexpensive set of glasses from online retailers or even discounted in-person retail shops. Once again, no, I don't mean to insult or disrespect any of these other retailers, but after having glasses made with me, they'll go somewhere else and then they'll come back and say, I can tell the difference and I didn't realize it right away, I was chasing the lower price point. And so they'll experience it and then they'll come back. And this is something that I'm finding more and more often. And then they're starting to say on their own, I see why these glasses cost what they cost. The average consumer, if they had a chance to try them out right next to each other for a couple of months, not just a couple of minutes, because the coatings are gonna seem just fine when they're nice and clean, but give it some time, throw it into your daily routine, and most people will start to notice the difference. So now I wanna answer the second question, which is how much should you consider spending on your next set of glasses? And yes, this is something that's relative, it's subjective, just like calling something expensive, because what's expensive for one person isn't expensive for the other. But I do have something that we could compare so that we could see if you fall into this one category, you might wanna use that as a reference for how much you should consider spending on your next set of glasses. According to a recent study, about 64% of Americans drink one cup of coffee a day, at least one cup of coffee a day. That's 64% of Americans. Now, as opposed to glasses wearers, 61% of Americans need some sort of glasses, whether it be for reading, computer, for driving, some sort of glasses, 61% and 64%. That's pretty close. So I think that we have something in common here that we could use as a reference point, okay? So 64% of people drink at least one cup of coffee a day. And another study revealed that the average American worker spends $1,000 a year on coffee. If somebody can justify spending $1,000 a year on coffee, shouldn't they be able to justify spending maybe half of that on their glasses, something that they potentially depend on for their work? for being able to drive home, to be able to see the beautiful smile on their kids' faces, to be able to watch a movie, to watch TV, to work on the computer, to work efficiently, to just live properly. But some people can't. Some people have a almost $1,000 smartphone in their pocket. They spend $1,000 a year on coffee, but they want to only spend 40 to $50 on glasses. And, and those are the things that I 
I just can't understand. I, I can't justify those kinds of things because I'm guilty of it. I have an iPhone and I drink a cup of coffee every day. And I also depend on my glasses. So I, I cannot understand, me personally, I cannot understand why somebody would say that they cannot justify spending a couple hundred dollars on a set of glasses. I know that everyone's economic situation is different. Everyone's visual needs are different. But nonetheless, if you're one of those American workers that could spend $1,000 on coffee, you should be able to spend a bit more money on getting a good quality set of glasses. You're never going to regret investing in your quality of vision or in the health of your eyes. Did you know that a $500 set of glasses broken down is going to cost you 614% less than a venti cup of coffee from Starbucks? Think about that, 614% less than a venti cup of coffee from Starbucks. So like I said, it's not to necessarily say that you should spend $500 on a set of glasses, but maybe we shouldn't necessarily call it expensive anymore. All right, so that's it. I tried to answer the question as best as I could in as little time as I could, but I understand that there's many ways to argue and discuss this topic, and I encourage it. In the comment section below, that's the perfect place to do it. So leave your questions, your comments, your feedback, and even let me know what would you consider to be the right amount to pay for a set of glasses. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Oliver for iInfluence. Enjoy the rest of your day.